For our project, we decided to use titration methods, but utilizing different brands of coffee and Coffee Mate Sweet Cream Creamer. The three brands we used were Starbucks, McDonald's, and homebrewed Gabby Folgers. Made with love. We wanted to see how acidic your coffee can be and how the acidity would be affected by the addition of creamer. Each trial, we titrated 20 milliliters of coffee with 12 milliliters of creamer and measured the pH before and after titration using the LabQuest. More specifically, to do our quote-unquote titration, we poured the black coffee, first using Starbucks, into a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder in order to measure out 20 milliliters, and then poured that into an Erlenmeyer flask. Next, we poured creamer into a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder all the way up to the 10 milliliter mark, but since we used 12 milliliters of creamer for each titration, we had to refill the graduated cylinder once per titration. A mini pipette was used to draw out and drop creamer into the Erlenmeyer flask, one milliliter at a time, and the LabQuest was used to record the pH after each subsequent drop. We also switched the flask around from time to time in order to make sure the creamer was spread throughout the solution. This brings us to a very important topic, things we should do differently if we were to repeat this experiment. First of all, it would have been better to do this experiment on a hot plate and with the stirry bar like we do with normal titrations in order to better and more thoroughly mix the coffee and creamer together. It didn't help that we didn't think to switch the flask around until a little bit of the way through doing the first titration with the Starbucks coffee, so that most likely skewed our initial pH recordings just a little. Second of all, in order to get more accurate results, it probably would have been a good idea to repeat the experiment multiple times. This way, we could get multiple results from multiple trials for each brand of coffee that we used, and this could help counteract any little errors that occur from experiment to experiment. Additionally, it would also be nice to test other types of creamer other than the Coffee Mate Sweet Cream Creamer that we used in this particular experiment. We then repeated all of these steps using the McDonald's coffee. Unfortunately, our videographer is a screw-up who doesn't know how to use her camera well, so you will just have to deal with the blurry footage of the McDonald's titration. However, fear not, as the footage for Gabby Folger's coffee is not blurry. Lastly, we finished off our experiment by repeating the steps again, but with the Gabby homebrewed Folgers coffee and with not blurry footage. The starting pH of the Starbucks coffee was 5.31 and the ending was 6.49, so the pH went up by 1.18. The starting pH of the McDonald's coffee was 5.18, so slightly more acidic. With the same amount of creamer titrated, the final pH was 6.46, so it went up by 1.28. The starting pH of the Gabby Folgers coffee was 5.3 and its ending pH was 6.67, so it went up by 1.37. The average starting pH was 5.26. The average ending pH was 6.54, and the average delta was 1.28. You might think to yourself, that isn't a very large change in pH. That's because we measured the pH of the creamer to be 6.75. Consequently, both the coffee and the creamer are weak acids. However, this change in pH is significant when it comes to our teeth. Our extensive research concluded that pH levels under 5.5 can cause damage to one's enamel, ergo one's overall dental health. Thus, drinking coffee black can be detrimental to the longevity of one's teeth, but adding creamer raises the pH of coffee. Don't scream, kids. Use some cream.